Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you with part two of this spirit-led teaching to test the spirit, to see whether it be of Christ. But to test the spirit, to see whether it be of Christ, you have to be in Christ to see whether that spiritual teaching is lining up with Christ or or Antichrist is using the letter unlawfully to blind you to the light of Christ. Because to, this is how you know it's Antichrist. You don't get the light of the letter. You get the letter as the light. This is the false Christ who uses the letter as the light because Satan ain't got no light. That's why he's called Antichrist instead of Christ. Everything he gives you is a substitute. So we have to test the spirit to see whether it be of God. But before we can test the spirit, we have to be in the spirit. Romans 8, 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any have not the spirit of Christ, they're not of his. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. You're under the dominion and government of Antichrist. Now, when you're under the spirit and in, in, when you're under the dominion and government of the Antichrist, this, his spirit is very religious. He puts on a religious show. This is where you get a Christ without the cross. A Christ without the cross, you got religion. You got Bible-based religion. That's the evidence of Antichrist right there. The letter is not being taught to you. You're not... The letter is not being taught from a perspective of light. The letter is being given as the light. And anytime the letter is being given as the light, it's blinding you to the light. Because the cross, when, it, when you get crucified with Christ to the flesh, you're crucified to everything he gave you in the flesh. The Bible and Bible-based religion. Uh, and Judeo religion. And Judeo religion. You're crucified to the flesh. And everything that you followed in the flesh. Which is religion. Because the flesh can only have religion. It can't have righteousness. Unless that righteousness. Has made alive the flesh by the fruit of the spirit. Then. Your flesh is justified in the sight of Christ's spirit. Because uh, it's being. Eternal purpose is being carried out through that vessel. Let us go to 3 John 1, 2. 3 John 1, 2 says that, uh, it says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper in being health even as your soul prospers. No prosperity comes out of, outside, of, no prosperity comes outside of the cross. Outside of the cross, you can have provision, but only through the cross do you have prosperity. What is provision? Provision is financial and material. The things of the world that Satan deceives the world into thinking is prosperity. Because if the world called it prosperity and you are you profess to be Christian and you are calling the prosperity what the world calls prosperity and you got a viewpoint of things as the world view, views it, you're not a Christian. That's that's not Christianity. What does what does light have in common with darkness? The whole world lies in wickedness. It lies in darkness. Once you profess to be a Christian, you're saying you're in the light. And if you're in the light of Christ, what does Christ have in common with the world? Nothing. So if the world calls it prosperity, if we operate in the true resurrected knowledge, of, in the resurrected knowledge of true Christianity, we know better. If we don't know better, 1 John 1 5 says we're liars and the truth is not in us. Because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. How can we say we're in the light and we're operating in, in, in ignorance? We're operating in spiritual ignorance. No, we're not in the light. So true prosperity comes through the cross because true prosperity is life beyond what you see. Anything outside of prosperity is life limited to what you see. If you're not in prosperity, you're in poverty because you're in one or the other. Poverty is actually living limited to what you see. You can be in poverty in spite of what you have. 
You can have much and still be in poverty. You can have much materially and still be in poverty because you're not in prosperity. We have to know the difference between God's prosperity and what the world calls prosperity. What the world calls prosperity, they get it from the spirit of the world. That's death. That's antichrist. That's why they base being blessed on what they have. But when you're in Christ's prosperity, you're living beyond what you what you see. <clears throat> and uh, uh, you're living beyond what you see uh, because you're in the resurrection of the first fruits of true Christianity. And the financial and material things of the world are going to come under the stewardship of that. Yeah, you're going to have it, but it's going to come under the stewardship of that. You're going to be able to distinguish prosperity from provision. Prosperity is something you become. Provision is something you possess. But when you're in spiritual darkness, provision becomes your prosperity because you don't know any better. And when provision becomes your prosperity, then you don't possess that provision. Demonic spirits do that pro provision is pro pro is possessing you because Satan can give you provision, but he can't give you prosperity. And this is how he tangle he tangles people's up people up. They're so wrapped up in his provision, especially in these little dead in churches where they they're, they're busy giving away all kind of things to get people there. And once you get tangled up in their little church systems where they help, they're helping you and then you begin to get light and you see the truth of that light, well, guess what? Now you're kind of in a bind because if you go to wear that light, you're going to lose the devil's provision. See, once you get in Christ's light, you lose the devil's provision because at the time, you don't know it's the devil's provision. Only once you get in the light, you understand it's the devil's provision. But you got to be crucified to the flesh and in Christ in the spirit to distinguish between the two. So we got to be very careful. We got to be very careful. This is how he catches a lot of people. 1 John 2.27, it speaks of the anointing that, that we receive. And... Uh, Back to 1 John 2.27 again. Because when we're in the anointed one, we're in Christ. Christian means Christ-like. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you. That's mankind and womankind in the flesh. But as the same anointing teaches, teaches you, of all things that pertain to the resurrection, that's life and godliness, and is truth and is no lie. And even if it, it has taught you, you shall abide in him. You shall abide in him. You shall abide in that anointing. So it is, it is God's will that we prosper and that we prosper by the anointing of his spirit. You see, because that is true prosperity. Don't miss true prosperity for a few handouts Satan is trying to give you. Or for a few handouts and pats on the back. This is how you separate Antichrist from true Christ. Antichrist gives you provision, but he can't give you prosperity. The true Christ gives you prosperity and then puts under your prosperity the stewardship of financial and material provision. You see, the true Christ gives you both. But in divine order, the false Christ can only give you one outside of divine order. That's provision. And he substitutes it as prosperity. He substitutes it as prosperity. This is why we walk by faith, not by sight, because Satan hides behind our humanity in the Bible. He hides behind our humanity, the flesh and the Bible. And if you're walking by sight, you can't catch him. You can't see him. But once you get into faith and you get into divine insight, you're going beyond what you see because now you, you're in the, you're seeing through the eyes of the resurrection of true Christianity, which, uh, uh, which is Christ. Because we're in Christ. 
through being crucified with Jesus. And now you, you're seeing who's behind the flesh, who's behind that Bible-based religion. Now you can quit being a hamster in the cage and you come out of that cage. Because religion, you, you're still dead in your sins and trespasses. You're just active in sin. But you haven't been delivered from sin. Let us go to 1 John 3, 4 through 10. 1 John 3, 4 through 10. 4 through 10. The gospel delivers us from sin. Whereby when we're in Antichrist, we get in church and we just get active in sin. It's the baptism of the Spirit that we got to receive after being born of the Spirit. It's not being baptized in water. That dispensation is over. Chapter 3, 4 through, uh, 1 John chapter 3, 4 through 10. 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Well, we were born dead in our sins and trespasses. So sin is the transgression of the law, and we were born dead in our sins and trespasses. The very first commandment says that you shall put no other gods before me. Well, we're born of the flesh, dead in our sins and trespasses in the spirit. So we have a flesh first mentality. We're born putting the flesh before him. So that means right out the womb, we broke the very first commandment. Right out the womb, we broke the first commandment. Don't even pay to try to keep the rest because we broke the first one right out the gate. And if you break one, you're guilty of them all. That's why you thank God for his grace. Because if you break one of the commandments, you're guilty of them all. So sin is whoever... who. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, and that's the law of life, which puts you under the law of commandments, for sin is the transgression of the law. Is the transgression of the law of commandments because we're born under those commandments? But when you're in Christ, you can't sin. You can commit an act of sin, but through your spirit can no longer become the fruit of sin. So this is really talking about when you're under the law of commandments. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. He was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Who was manifested? Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. But Jesus was not God. God manifested in the flesh means that Jesus, uh, uh, that God came in Jesus. That God came in Jesus. Jesus was the physical manifestation of, of God, but Jesus was not God. You see, well, Jesus healed, but Jesus healed according to the flesh. Because no one could be eternally healed in the spirit. Go back to the teachings of Christ, uh, 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 the written, the teachings of, of Jesus in the written word. And who did Jesus heal spiritually? No one. Because no one could be healed spiritually by Jesus because Jesus was flesh. He was not spirit. So when he healed, they got a shadowing type of healing in the flesh, which was to come a shadowing type of healing in the flesh, which was to come, which was a shadowing type of that true healing, which, which was to come in Christ in the spirit. See, your flesh has to come back under the government of the fruit of the spirit, which is the health of the flesh. Because the Spirit created the flesh, the, therefore the fruit of the Spirit is the preservation of the flesh. That's what the health is. He was manifested to take our sin away our sin, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinned not. Whosoever sinned had not seen him, neither known him. Whosoever abides in Christ sins not, because that which is born of God cannot sin. Sins not. And whosoever sinned not, and whosoever sins had not seen him, neither known him. Because if, if your spirit is still capable, if uh, 
the enemy, the devil, Antichrist, is still manifesting through your spirit. You've neither seen Christ, neither known Christ, because you've never been born of the spirit. Once born of the spirit, you're cut off from the root of sin, which is death. And your soul and body dies to the fruit of sin, which is death. So whosoever sinned it had not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteousness. If the righteousness of God is manifesting through you, then you're in the righteousness of God. You can't do righteousness. Righteousness is something that's done in us. For he that committed sin is of the devil. He's not the devil, but that individual is still spiritually in death because the devil is still manifesting through their spirit. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, he that committed sin is of the devil. This does not mean that the devil is through that person saying, hey, I'm the devil, and I got this person sinning. No, that's not how it works. He that committed sin is of the devil. This is the one that denies Christ to continue following a cross without Christ. They continue on in Bible-based religion in spite of seeing the light because they don't want to count the cost of discipleship. When you start getting a lot of help from these churches and Antichrist entangles you in his provision so that when you see true prosperity, well, if I embrace this, I'm going to lose this. I need that for my children. I need this roof over my head because I've got kids. This is the type of stuff Satan entangles you up in to keep you locked down in a church. To keep you locked down in a good for nothing fruitless church and keep you out of Christ. And keep you out of Christ. This, this, is, this is how he does it. This is how he does it. He entangles you. For the devil sinned from the beginning, for this purpose, we got to enter into purpose, was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now understand, Jesus being flesh could not destroy the works of the devil in the spirit. Christ did, and he destroyed the works of the devil through what he carried out in that physical body. <clears throat> he destroyed the works of the devil through what he carried out in that physical body. Because Jesus was born of a woman pertaining to the flesh, made under law in the spirit. So Jesus had a spirit. But he had a sinless spirit. Jesus was spirit, soul, and body just like us. But he had a sinless spirit. See, everything starts with your spirit. It is our spirit that was dead in sins and trespasses. And the soul and body bound through the transgressions of our spirit. So when he died, his spirit died sinless. Our spirit died with his sinless and to sin. And our spirit based on his sinless spirit was resurrected from sin. That was our escape. So when someone is giving you a Christ without the cross that's attached to church, you are still dead in your sins. You don't have to be a member of nobody's church. That ain't got nothing to do with Christianity. You ain't, you ain't even got to go to church. We can, you should go to a gospel church. Good luck trying to find one. I would love to go to a gospel church, but guess what? You can't find them. They, 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 they really don't exist. They're there, but they're so, they're so far and few in between Everything is either is Bible based, is denominational or non-denominational. But they all got the same foundation, biblical. They all got the same foundation, biblical. Now, if you are assigned to a church being in the army of light, then go to that church and endure what you have to endure because you're going to have to endure some empty teachings. But 
for whatever purpose that Christ places you there, understand it is for light to manifest there. We are vessels of light. So that means we're going to be in places we really don't want to be because you put light in dark places. You put light in dark places. Spiritual light has to manifest where there is spiritual death. To give people an opportunity to see that light and choose light and live. Nine, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Because his spirit is cut off from sin. Now we are still capable of an act of sin in the flesh, but no longer through our spirit can come the fruit of sin. No longer through us can become come the fruit of sin in the spirit. You see, it's the fruit of sin that separated us from Christ. Now we don't become we don't become active in the act of sin. We don't start engaging that, but we as Christians can commit an act of sin. But it's not the act that separates you from the Lord, it's the fruit. If we say that we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Because he was manifested to say, take away our sins. So if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Nine, that's 1 John 8 and 9. If we confess our sins, knowing what sin is, not saying, Lord, I'm sorry for committing this act of adultery, but you're still in the spirit of adultery because you've never been born from above. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is a spirit. You have to get on that spiritual level to, to know that when the Lord cleanses you from sin, he cleanses you from spiritual sin because sin is spiritual. What took place in the flesh was an act of sin. But what is separating you from, from Christ, which is to be separated from God, is the fruit of sin. Is the fruit of sin and Jesus was manifested to take away our sins. He was manifested in the flesh and through that eternal work in the flesh, he was manifested in the flesh, but he wasn't just flesh. He was soul and spirit. So once our spirit was set free from sin, from the root of sin, the soul and body dead to the, to the fruit of sin so that we can walk in all the fullness of God. So when we are confessing our sins, that's true repentance. We know not what sin is. We now know who sin is, that we were operating in the knowledge of sin, in the knowledge of sin. You know, we repent in religion. We repent for what we do in the, in the, in the flesh, but because we don't have light in us, we don't repent for what we are in the spirit because we can't see our true spiritual condition. So when we confess our sins, we confessing that we've been walking in the knowledge of sin and we get crucified unto that spirit. Okay, let's go back. 10. In this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So, if through you is manifesting the fruit of sin, you're still in sin. But we know Christ was manifested in, uh, Christ came in Jesus to take away our sins through that eternal work which he carried out in Jesus. Through that eternal work which he carried out in Jesus, which makes us independent of the flesh. When we were crucified with Jesus to the flesh, that was to bring us back to Christ in the spirit. Christ is our independence from the flesh, from church, from Bible-based religion, from any religion. He's our independence from the flesh back to the spirit. Because true independence is to be freed from the flesh. Ain't no independence. There is no independence in the flesh. And that brings us to an end of part two of this teaching. So if it's the true Christ, you're freed from the biblical church. If it's the false Christ, 
He's giving you the biblical church. Now, if you got a Bible-based church mentality, you got a Christ without the cross. But if you got a Christ mentality and you're living beyond, you, you, you're living in that resurrection power beyond the flesh, beyond church, beyond the Bible, by sight in the flesh, because you're in the first fruit resurrection of true Christianity in the spirit. You got the true Christ. You got the true Christ. But the false Christ blinds you to true prosperity and puts you in the flesh and gives you a mentality of the world and give you the audacity to call yourself a Christian with the provision of the world and got you thinking that provision is prosperity. And got you thinking that provision is prosperity. The devil's provision come at a cost. You don't eat at the devil's table because that provision comes at a cost. A cost that you ain't willing to pay. Don't fatten yourself up for the day of slaughter. That brings us to the end of part two of this teaching. Love you in the Lord. Be blessed and grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. And be untouchable. Amen.